seems to be at a bit of a standstill right now. It's like nothing is quite moving. The SP500 is around 4,200. At the time I'm recording this video, its peak was at 4,700. Dow, 33,000 away from its peak of 36,000. And NASDAQ at 13,000 away from its peak of 16,000. But that's just the stock market. The housing market seems to be going to a little bit of decline. People are waiting for this bum rush of home prices to just crash. But I unfortunately doesn't see it happening that way because of the fact that mortgages are, were much more prepared when people were given mortgages. Now, a lot of their financials had to be thoroughly sought through unless there's like a natural disaster that sweeps away parts of the country in certain areas. That's the only thing I can see that would force people to sell or force them to move and they have to really make that transaction and that that what that possibly could be what triggers it but we're not sure there was also a recent government shutdown that almost happened this back and forth between the democrats and the republicans the democrats wanted to spend more money in certain places and the republicans did not want to this to, to, to actually keep continuing but at the end of the day the there was some compromise made and the Republicans agreed on a lot of the term for the Democrats temporarily. There's going to be a later meeting this year. I don't really dive my head too deep into it because it's only going to cause two things, right? It's either going to cause the economy to, well, three things actually, to, to remain as it is, to go down or go further up. Instead of me diving my head into all this nuances, the little things that they're talking about. It's really come around budget. And like one of the things that did stand out to me is the money towards Ukraine. I don't see why Ukraine needs more money. That's me honestly speaking. Do they need help? They do. But sometimes when you just pour money into things, does not mean it solves its problems at all. And there are a bunch of other countries that face different things. But why Ukraine it seems to be getting like the, the central attention you got to really think about this in your subconscious mind because there is always a hidden agenda when you see media is making things as prominent, the government is making things as prominent versus there's this stuff exists elsewhere as well. I'm not saying Ukraine doesn't need help at all, but it just seems like they're just getting a ton of money, taxpayer dollars. And I'm talking over $100 billion, I think, at this point that they've received so far from the United States. That's coming from us. We could use $100 billion to rebuild certain communities to do certain things. Maybe if they got $20 billion and we retained $80 billion, even a half and half split, right? It could have improved other parts of the economy, possibly, or either neighborhoods and things like that. But we're not seeing that happening. So we don't really know why their attention is really drawn towards Ukraine. But there is some hidden agendas. I encourage you to look thoroughly into it. I don't trust it. And I'm, I can't speak for you, but that's just me personally speaking in regards to that. Home prices, back to that. I actually went to see a couple more properties in Atlantic City. So that's South Jersey for me. Just to see where the market is shifting, at least with foot on the ground. And let me tell you right now, things are very tight. Like, because of the higher interest rates, which has increased just a little bit. I know the last one was a pause, but mortgages have risen just a little bit. Right now, FHA is around the 7%, a little over that. And then conventional is around seven and a half, which is pretty in intense. If I do some quick math, right, six hundred forty-nine thousand, the principal and interest. Uh, let's say the closing cost comes about to that down payment. We're using FHA numbers, three and a half percent down, interest rates eight percent, right? The mortgage insurance calculated for us. The property taxes, I think it's around eight thousand. So I put yeah, a little over eight thousand. The insurance is about $4,000 because I think of the size of the house, it was four units. And then maintenance fees is around, I would say about $600 monthly, right? I always put a little overhead just in case. So $6,700 is the monthly cost, right? I don't want you to think about this could be it because this could be less depending on your home expenses and things like that. But let's look at if we did this on a 4% interest rate. So I'm not even going to go to 3%, but 4%. Right, fifty one hundred dollars, sixteen hundred dollar difference, which is insane. Right, you could save quite a bit. That could deter people from investing in something, and this is on a monthly basis. Times that about by by one year, that is about twenty thousand dollars. Right, about sixteen hundred dollars times twelve. That's pretty insane. So I did put an offer on this one place. They got back to me and they said the numbers doesn't work out. 
the numbers are bad for what they were asking, but it's just with the interest rates, it, it makes things don't make sense at all. And that's why I kind of had to pull away from it. But don't be encouraged. Stay persistent. Keep your eyes on the ground. Don't do things that doesn't make sense. If you crunching numbers and you see don't make it doesn't make sense, don't make this an emotional decision that I have to get into it. Don't have the fear of missing out. Just like with stocks and everything. People are running right now to high yield savings account because they're able to have an increase of their money at the moment. But in the long run, if you compare that towards like a 10 year mark, you'll see that performing in equities, performance in equities, as well as different investment, alternative investments, even real estate outperforms you keeping your money in a high yield savings account of 5%. It doesn't quite make sense for the long run, but temporarily you got to mix and balance things and see how much you're going to allocate towards that. That's something you should speak to your financial advisors and look at your financials to see what makes sense for you. But I encourage you to buy as you see things are dropping down, find stocks that you're interested in, that you believe in, companies that you really really, really believe in their business model. And when you look at their financials, and I know it's tough sometimes looking at the financials, but see what their quarterly earnings have been for the past like two, three years, because it will give you a better sense of dealing with tough times. How have they managed their budget, their income coming in during these tough times? Those are things you got to really analyze. But that's pretty much all I wanted to share with you, give you a quick market update so you get a snapshot of where the economy is. Things are pretty much at like a standstill. The only thing that might affect things if this whole government shutdown actually happens later this year, home prices potentially falling down. They have been in certain places, but the crash that people may think like the, the 30, 40, 50% discount that happened back in 08, I don't see that happening. Maybe 15% at its peak, maybe possibly 20 but I don't see it reaching any higher than that. And for me, 20% discount would be great. 15 would be great. Like I can get things that make sense at a 15% discount, like this home I just calculated for you. If it was listed at like 575, 550, I could potentially do it. But with the current interest rates at the price that they're asking and the rent that you can potentially get from the units that you can rent out, the math doesn't really quite math out. So stay encouraged, peace and love, trust in Jesus. Like, share, subscribe. Of course, if you have any questions for me, drop it in the comments below, and I shall see you next time. Peace. Hustle, 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 hustle.